Welcome to The Prayer Link. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I am Charlene Aaron. I am so excited about the show we have today. We've got a great show for you guys today. We do. We have two very amazing prophetic voices on it. this show. I love it. Matt Brown, we often show his videos here on Prayer Link yes. with Think, e, um, Think Eternity. I love the fact he's going to be with us today. Yeah. And, and, the, the, and Sean and, Bowles. And Sean Bowles. Sean Bowles, it was interesting. I was in one of his services one time. He gets numbers, he gets he addresses, does. he gets Specific. birth dates, yeah. and it just freaks everybody <laughs> out. How can you possibly know it, God? That's how God, God knows speaks us to in him. detail. Yeah. I love it. It's really, really cool. To talk to and he's got such a, they both have such humble uh, spirits, yes. and, and, the, and the love of Jesus just comes out of them, and so yeah. we're so excited. I'm excited. Awesome. All right, let's get into today's hot topics. The House of Representatives recently passed a landmark bill that criticized that critics warned could hurt the right of religious freedom. The Equality Act amends the Civil Rights Act by broadening anti-discrimination protections for LGBTQ Americans. Critics say it could have disastrous unintended consequences, including weakening parental involvement in children's medical decisions. Matt Staver, founder of Liberty Council, agrees. He told Pat Robertson the Equality Act is a dangerous threat to religious freedom. The LGBT issue is intolerant, and the target is religious freedom, churches, people of faith, because that's the last bastion that holds to Judeo-Christian values. And that's why this literally guts religious freedom. Wow. Although Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he has no plans to bring the Equality Act up to a vote, even if it were to pass in both chambers, the White House has said the president will not sign the bill. So at least we have that. Claim. You know, what's really interesting, I was reading on Twitter today, there are even people who are on the other side of the issue of the aisle politically yeah. oh. who say that this is a bad thing. Wow. That's okay. amazing. Then, then you know. Then you okay. know it's bad. We need to keep praying. <laughs> That's right. Definitely. Well, the PBS animated television series Arthur recently featured a gay wedding. I mean, come on, Arthur. Well, in a new episode called Mr. Ratburn and the Special Someone, Arthur and his friends attend their teacher's wedding, and the group thinks that their teacher is marrying a woman, but it turns out he's marrying a man. In a statement to People Magazine, the network said that PBS Kids programs are designed to reflect the diversity of communities across the nation. We believe it is important to represent the wide array of adults in the lives of children who took who look to PBS kids every day. You know, it's just we just see more and more of this every day in our culture. Well, you know, the the newly elected mayor of Chicago. Oh yeah. First African American, first African American female, but also, she's a lesbian. She's also a lesbian. Yeah. And had her wife with her there on the stage. Wow. And uh you know, we can't deny, even as Christians, that this is becoming more mainstream. It is becoming more mainstream, yes. But we are called to be in the world, not of the world, yeah. and stand on the truth of Speak God's truth. word. The truth. Speak truth. It doesn't matter if PBS is putting it on there. It doesn't make it doesn't right. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it and right. It's sad to see that it's, it's they're really targeting children. Yeah. With this message, and oh, yeah, it's they just want more to and more. The earlier they do. they do, the better for them, yeah. and not for us. Well, a little girl who was abducted in Texas has been found after the heroic efforts of two pastors. Salem Sabatica and Sab Sabaka, rather, and her mother were taking a walk when a man grabbed Salem and pulled her into his car. Salem's mother jumped in the car and tried to fight the abductor but was pushed out of the vehicle. Twelve hours later, two pastors voluntarily went to look for Salem and found the man's vehicle in a hotel parking lot. Jeff King is a local pastor and friend of Salem's dad. I have two boys and I would have wanted as many eyes looking out for my boys um, as possible. I feel like God allowed uh, me to be a tool. Authorities say when Salem was found, she was calm and unharmed, thank wow. goodness. We don't know the details of what happened during How this 12 hours. How horrific for the child. How horrific. And the mother. Just, but the miracle that wow. A, she was found, and B, that she's alive and okay. Yes, thank you, God. So she can recover no matter God what happens. Yeah. and her mom, wow. Well, a Virginia man is being hailed a hero for preventing a man from taking his own life. 
Back in April, 31-year-old Colin Dozier was driving home late one night when he saw a car parked on the Lesnar Bridge in Virginia Beach. Dozier, a devout Christian, found the man poised to jump to his death. He says that he tried to talk the man out of it, but he ignored him. But with faith in God, he kept trying. At that point, I ended up, uh, I was just like, hey man, don't do it. Jesus loves you. He's got a plan for your life. I did what I, the only thing I know to do in a situation like that, and that's to pray. And I was like, Lord Jesus, please speak to this man. I pray right now you open his up his eyes and show him your love. And that's exactly what happened. God is so good. Dozier was finally able to grab the man and pull him from the bridge's railing. He is now a Christian, praise God. His name yeah. is Jacob, and he attends Dozier's church, and he's going to be baptized next month. I love that God put a former wrestler yes. right there in the bridge who yes. was able to just, you know, he told get me, him. He told me when I interviewed him, he said, if I knew that I, if I got my arms around him, oh, yeah. he was not getting he wasn't away. Getting because, I mean, <laughs> he, he won a full scholarship on wrestling yeah. to uh, college. So he was like, he knew what he, went, what he needed to do. God knew. God <laughs> knew. Amen. Well, evangelist and author Matt Brown uses social media as his pulpit, and he's reaching around 5 million people a month. In his new book, Truth Plus Love, The Jesus Way to Influence, he encourages Christians to do a better job representing the love of God while telling unbelievers about the truth of Jesus. That's right. And Matt joins us now via Skype. Welcome to Prayer Link, Matt. Oh, it's such an honor to join you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our audience is totally familiar with you because we actually, you know, we promote your videos here on the show. And the Word of the Week. Word yeah. of the Week, that's right. How did you, first of all, get started in the ministry? Uh, so I grew up in a Christian home uh, at an early age, came to faith in Christ, and, um, you know, sensed the call to ministry even at an early age, but it wasn't until I was 17. I was at a youth conference here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and God just really broke my heart for my friends in my school who needed to hear the gospel in my public school. And at that moment, I just sensed this very clear calling to spend my life preaching the gospel, to share the gospel as an evangelist. And so I've been doing that now for 18 years, started a ministry called Think Eternity. And, but it really started with that burden. You know, when we look at what's going on in today's world, it's, it, we can either be bothered or we can be burdened. And I think God wants to give us his heart for people who are so lost without him, just like we were. You know, and so um, that's that's where it all started for me. I love that. Such as we were. I love the fact that you are reaching, Matt, which is amazing, around five million people a month through your online ministry, Think Eternity. Why do you think so many are responding online? Well, one of the amazing things is, you know, when I sensed the call to ministry, it was actually before social media even started. <laughs> and so... I didn't have any premonition of that, and um, but it's become this avenue to share the gospel as well as, you know, alongside of things like preaching at events and, and holding outreaches, and, and so it's just become this amazing opportunity. Um, I was actually slow to get on social media, but I've realized, like, the amazing mission field it is and the opportunity it is. There's no other generation that's had this opportunity. You know, every believer who's watching right now uh, may have not thought about this yet, but we all have this online megaphone. Each of us has an online megaphone to talk to hundreds or maybe thousands of people we've known throughout our lives. And of course, we share a lot of our life with them, but we can share the gospel with them too. There might be some creative ways to do that. Man. I love that. Well, let's talk about social media some more. You say it can also be problematic for Christians. How so? Well, so the scary thing is without thinking too hard, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on in our world today. So without thinking too hard, you know, we post our thoughts about everything that's going on. And let's be honest, a lot of time the media baits us, you know, not you guys, of course, but but uh, the secular media, it, it makes us want to respond in anger or frustration to things that are going on. It's trying to cause us to respond. And so then we respond, but we're not thinking, you know, about these hundreds or these thousands of friends that we're talking to and what they feel about things. And so we can come across angry. And it's so important that as believers, we represent Jesus with truth for sure. We need the truth. That's where the power is. But we also need this remarkable love. There should be a distinguishable difference as Christians in how we disagree with people as the way the rest compared to the way the rest of the world does it. And so there needs to be this difference about us. And it's the fruit of the spirit. It's love and then it's the rest of the fruit of the spirit. We need to have this joy, this peace. As we walk in those ways, people are drawn to us. And then we can share the hope. We can share the truth of the gospel. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you just have to use discernment about if you get a post, you sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, don't, don't even respond, respond because yeah. they just want to fight. But other times somebody really is uh, looking for answers. In your book, Truth Plus Love, you say Christians should be growing in both of these things, truth and love. Talk about that, please. Yes, it's so important. You know, if we have... 
uh, if we have love, but we don't have the truth, we move into error. You know, the Bible warns against giving license to sin. And some, some churches and some Christians are doing that nowadays. They, they want to be loving. So they just say, live however you want. You can call yourself a Christian and live, you know, completely away from the Lord. And if we do that, we, we disconnect the power cord. You know, the, the power of God is with the word of God, is with the gospel as it was given to us by God himself. And there's amazing power there. But of course, if we have this truth, a lot of believers are passionate about the truth of God's word. But God's word tells us all about compassion and kindness and love and gentleness. And it calls us to walk in those ways. It says that those are the fruit of the spirit in our lives. So our natural responses are going to be to be angry about everything that's going on. And that's normal. But we need to learn to, to allow the spirit to lead the way we respond to things. And it doesn't, by the way, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't speak truth. I mean, there is such an importance for believers to be salt and light in today's world. But we need to do it in a different way than the world around us does it. They need to see that we care so much about them, that we have God's heart for them. And I think when we do that, you know, the truth comes across differently. I love that. And I love the fact that what you're talking about is really in line with Jesus's prayer in John 17 about, you know, Lord, make them one and that we would be in, we would show forth the love because people are drawn to the love. But, but Matt, last year, you, you know, Facebook invited you to a host, um, to host a summit of Christian social media influencers. And out of that, you began pouring into the lives of other young evangelical leaders. Tell us about that. Yes, so the last few years, and even actually over the last seven years, I've had some different opportunities to gather different groups of leaders and just try to uh, encourage, disciple, mentor, be a blessing. Um, It's been amazing. The Facebook gathering last uh, summer was just beyond anything I could have hoped for. So special. Thanks to a guest that you've had on in the past, Nona Jones, who's really been a catalyst for them to connect faith communities, including Christians. Um, and then I was able to actually go back this January as well with other leaders. And um, and during that moment, we actually got to spend some time. We got to spend about 45 minutes with Cheryl Sandberg, the chief operating officer of Facebook. Um, and you'll love this. At the end of our time, there's a bunch of pastors around the table. We offered to pray for her. Wow. And she's from a Jewish background, and she said, no one's ever offered to pray for me before. Oh, wow. And she literally prayed for her right there, and, and it was just this sweet, powerful moment, and she just thanked us so genuinely and authentically. So it's kind of an opportunity to be salt and light. I mean, who would have thought, you know, we'd get to spend time with someone that's really, she works alongside Mark Zuckerberg, but really making a big difference, uh, influencing the world through this global platform. It's not just a big company, but it's such a a historic global platform. And so we obviously pray. And by the way, there's a lot of believers over at Facebook. So it was encouraging to see their faith and how God's using each of them right where they're at. Matt, that's amazing. No one had offered to pray for her. Thank you guys for that opportunity that God presented to you all and you took advantage of it. Matt Brown, thank you so much for your time today. Congrats on the new book. God bless. All right. Amazing. Well, coming up, he's the modern day prophet that can tell you your name, what street you live on, all without you saying a word. We sit down with Sean Boltz to learn how he is using his gift to bring the unchurched to God. Young people, millennials are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. Well, Sean Bowles is a pioneer in ministry, including the prophetic movement. And as a pastor, author, producer, and TV show host with a prophetic gift, he often connects people in Hollywood to the heart of God. I love that. That's right. His Expression 58 Christian Ministries focuses on the entertainment industry and the poor in Los Angeles. And Sean joins us now via Skype. Sean, welcome to Prayer Link. Hey, I'm so glad to be here, you guys. Thanks for inviting me. (laughs) Well, what do you believe is the purpose of the prophetic. You know, I love the prophetic because if you look at 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it says, go after love like your life depends on it and eagerly desire prophecy. So it's a gift that Paul's telling all of the Corinthians to desire because it proves the love nature of God the quickest. When did you, Sean, first know that you had this gift? You know, I was raised in a Christian home with some wonderful Christian parents who were working out their salvation. They were first generation and they ended up getting uh, radically like just filled with God and the vineyard movement back with John Wimber and the Jesus people movement revival. And so I was saved out in Southern California at the age of three or four. And we would, my dad was a colonel in the Air Force. So we'd go to old folks' homes and prisons and they would just bring us everywhere they could. And we would just ask God, what do you want to do after my dad would teach? And we would see from the time I was six, seven, eight years old, we'd minister to people. And it was very common for my parents to have the waitress crying at the table 
and bring her to Jesus, you know, because they had a word of knowledge or they had a, a healing prayer for her. Awesome, Sean. I love the fact that, you know, God gives you some specific um, things to minister to people when you're sharing with them. What is the wildest experience that you've had with sharing a word with someone? <laughs> <laughs> I think one of them was this uh, billionaire in Singapore who wasn't really open to Jesus being a real figure. He was like, he was very close hearted and he was in a lot of trouble in his personal life. And uh, he's now laughs about this and doesn't mind that I share this, by the way. And uh, so I was with him and his wife, and I said, I know you don't believe in the reality of God and that you feel, I mean, at this point, he's, he's supported a whole church and everything and for, to even establish. And he said, well, uh, I don't believe in the reality of God. I said, well, can I pray for you and just see if God will show us anything to just show his love to you? And he said, yes. And I started to rattle off a series of numbers and letters, and I didn't know what I was doing. I felt like I was in a beautiful minds movie, crazy person. But I just felt to be obedient to the nudging of the Holy Spirit because I have a history of this. And he goes, how do you know this? Halfway through, there's no way, there's no way. And his wife's saying, what? What is this? What is this? He goes, this is my most private secret bank account number that even you don't know to his wife. And she's like, what? You know, <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> and he realized God's real because only him and the banker knew it. So he realized how real God was and how he had, he was set, setting himself up for a place where he had something that was held back from God and his wife and his family. And God was saying, it's time to give everything. Wow, that oh is so awesome. Amazing. Sean, how do you encourage people to hear the voice of God, to begin moving in the prophetic? You know, I think most of us hear from God in a, in a, uh, as Christians all the time. I think, of, uh, you know, when we read the Bible, all of a sudden it's highlighted to us. And I love your guest, Matt Brown, who's on. I mean, he, I had him on my podcast, Exploring the Prophetic, and he was sharing how he heard from God. Everybody from the conservative evangelicals to Pentecostals hear from God. We just disagree with how we hear from God. And I think if we look at it like, you know, a, a man who came up to me and said, I don't hear from God, Sean, and I'm hearing your teachings, and it scares me. And I said, well, when's the last big win you had by loving someone in your family? Like, what, what's the best story you can tell me? And he said, well, I gave my son and daughter-in-law, I gave them uh, the money that they would need for a house as a down payment as part of their legacy of what I would have given them after I died. I gave it to them now, their inheritance. And it changed their whole life because she had never had a house in her family. They started her wanting children right away. She never wanted children. And all of a sudden, they're rooted in this house. And it just changed everything for him. I said, how did you get that idea? And he said, I just thought of it. And I said, I want to beg to differ that you're a Christian who prays for God to give you the best quality of life and for your family. He nudged you, but you're expecting God to be a disruptive voice from outside saying, this is the voice of God versus that inward voice that leads us in our unconscious process and our spiritual conscious process. And we, we discount that, but God promises us the Holy Spirit will live inside of us. And last thing is 1 Corinthians 2 says the Holy Spirit will search the deepest parts of the Father and connect them to the deepest parts of us. So that means that we should expect the lot of the things we're processing about when we hear something that doesn't sound like us, like give that person some money or help that person, you know, with, to their car with their groceries or whatever it is, that that place of hearing God that's not just transactional but reveals his nature to us is, is, is God. And we have to learn that. And that's one of the things that we're teaching right now, try to change the conversation of the prophetic. Sean, what would you say to someone who may be afraid of stepping out and sharing a word that God is laying on their heart because they're afraid of messing up or getting it wrong, frankly? Well, the good thing is in the Old Testament, you know, we see that if you got it wrong, there's only one person at a time or a couple of people at a time who heard from God. And so it was all about that person being right. It was all about the information and the integrity of the information. In the New Testament, we see, you know, we're justified by our own faith in God. We don't need a priest to lead us, but each one of us hears from God for ourselves. So that's one theological difference between the Old and New Testament is that Paul even, when Agabus said, hey, this is how they're going to bind you and put you in jail if you go to Rome, don't go. And he said, I've heard from God, I have to go to Rome. So we even have that kind of tension where someone hears from God for themselves in that. But then the other thing is we have to cross and repent it. So if, if we get something wrong, we just say, sorry, you know, we, we just course correct. And so that's, that's a big one for people where they don't realize if each one of us is justified by our own faith and we hear from God ourselves, there's really not a lot we can mess up in because I can't tell you, Wendy, I can't say you have to move tomorrow and, you, and you're you going to be wrong if you don't move. You actually have to listen to God for yourself. So we can learn a lot and have a lot of accountability in that. Amen. And Sean, I understand you have a, a conference coming up. What inspired the idea for this and why Dallas? I know exactly. You know, we're, the narrative is changing so much over how Christianity views the prophetic. Like I thought our first book on, on the prophetic translating God was going to be this little fringy topic that, you know, we'd sell 10,000 copies and it sold hundreds of thousands of copies in the mainstream Christian market. And as, you know, Barnes and Noble celebrates it. Amazon loves us. And because Christians want this conversation, and Harper Collins even came to me and said, can we do a book on the prophetic with you? Because when we look at what Christians are interested in, it's the number two topic worldwide. 
So the conversation has changed in our generation. People want to know the God of the supernatural, the God who loves through the prophetic. And so we started to bring together people in business, entertainment, politics, and have these incredible conversations of how they're hearing from God. And I realized we need to do an event where we can draw people together and have that conversation, but also do impartation and actually go into a deep spiritual experience with God together, where we have the people who are already going after it in part and say, God, anything I can have, I know everyone else can have it too. So we had this event in Dallas, May 30th, 31st and 1st. And we did it in Dallas because so many of the people we invited are accessible there. And it's also so central for the whole country and also for the world, it's an easy airport to travel into. We just felt like Dallas is a leader right now, spiritually, and that there's something happening in Dallas that I think is gonna be really significant in the next 10 and 20 years, awesome. and even the next great worldwide move of God. Awesome, and just really quickly, you know, Matt, uh, I'm gonna call Matt, Sean. <laughs> Matt was on earlier. But a lot of people are having prophetic dreams, but sometimes we don't understand the interpretation yeah. of those dreams. It can be difficult. Do you have any pointers for prophetic dreamers? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think the first thing you got to do is realize there's no set rule book for dreams. So blue can be royalty to somebody. It can be revelation to somebody else. God speaks to us according to our personality, our type, and what he's done in our life, our experience. So if God gives you a dream, this is going to become an indicator. And it might be progressive revelation, meaning you have a reoccurring dream that unfolds over time. But write it down, write it down, process it with one or two friends you know, we have a guy in our ministry who we have about 90 people on our prophetic team, and he leads a dream team. So if you look at our Facebook, our public Facebook, Sean Bowles Public, you can see under Sean Bowles uh, the message center, and he'll help you interpret your dreams, the goal of teaching you interpretation skills. But there's great resources. God is speaking to us, and a lot of times he uses when we don't allow him to use our conscious process, he uses our unconscious process during dreams. Or sometimes it's just the easiest way to impart his nature to us through a story or a parable in the night. Amen. Amazing. Sean Bowles, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for your appearance on Prayer Links. This is the second time I think you've been on the show, so we'd love to have you back again. And, and so he's got you. tons of resources on his yes. website as well. It's so great having Sean awesome. on the show. All, All right. right. Well, coming up, we will bring be praying for your needs, so stay with us. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment you won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Check your local listings or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. I was behind the wheel of a car and was about to end it all. When you go through abuse, it's like something um, handicaps you in that moment. My life has been, you know, one direction, up, down, sideways. I've just been just like the trajectory of a knuckleball. God wants to love you where you are, wherever that is, in your brokenness. Like he wants to be there with you in that moment. God is in control of my life and I'm thankful for it. Guess what? Sean's sticking around to pray. I love it. We're going to be <laughs> spending the next couple of minutes praying for, for your needs. But first, we want to encourage you to email us your prayer request at prayerlink at cbn.org. That's right. And Sean, would you please start us off by praying for those who are watching today? Absolutely. God, thank you for everyone who's watching. God, I thank you that CBN has been such a forerunner in, in using the tool of words and knowledge, hearing your voice, especially for the sick and for people who have heart issues and spiritual issues that you want to resolve. And we thank you, God, that you want to impart your ability to hear from you to every believer watching. Thank you for John 10, where you say, my sheep hear my voice. And I pray for every one of your sheep right now who's watching that they would have a personal connection, both in the word, but also by your spirit to know what's in your heart. Where Paul said that you search the deep parts of the Father's heart, Holy Spirit, search those things about the things that we need to know for practical solutions in our lives and show us the answers. We thank you that we serve a living, interactive God who loves us. And I pray for an impartation of the gift of prophecy and words of knowledge and words of wisdom, that you would use these as powerful tools to help create new ways that you move in our lives and new narratives for our relationships, God. And I pray that there would be just today an enlightenment in our spirit of your word and who you are. Revelation or Ephesians 1.17, Paul prayed that God would give us spirit of wisdom and revelation so we can know Jesus more. We pray for that, God. Give us all of your wisdom and revelation so we can really know you more. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And even as Sean was uh, talking and praying, um, I just sensed in my spirit that there's someone who has a heart condition, uh, heart failure is what the doctor is saying, mm -hmm. like congestive heart failure. But Lord, we just thank you for healing because what you reveal, you heal. Yes. So we thank you for healing that heart condition, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father. Oh God, we just lift up our nation. Lord, it's so divided in Washington. Lord, we just ask, Lord, God, that you would send legions of holy warrior angels, God, that they're this bickering, in, it, it's in this political theater, God, would come to a sudden halt, God, and that there would be, Lord, just a revelation um, of your love and goodness, even between the political parties. Lord, we need, we need a breakthrough, God, in Washington from the top, from the president on down, God. We just ask for that. And Lord, also, I just believe there's people that are wanting to step out and, and learn more about the prophetic and God, that you would give them the courage, Lord, that you would give them the resources and that you would give them um, every, just everything they need, Lord, to take that step of faith because that's what pleases you, God, is when we take that step of faith. And we just pray that you, yes. uh, huge blessings and favor upon our guests today, Sean Bolts and Matt. Uh, Brown, Lord, thank you for their ministries. Thank you, God, for their front line. Thank you for their uh, their humility and their love mm -hmm. for your people, God. And may that spread in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sean, thank you so much for sticking around and praying for us and with us. And I was receiving it. And... <laughs> it's my favorite. I pray for more. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. Well, up next, we're bringing you the word of the week. So stay tuned. Come home to the Southern Gospel Station from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites. CBN Southern Gospel, available now at CBNRadio.com. And welcome back to Prayer Link. And we heard from Evangelist Matt Brown earlier, and now he has our Word of the Week. Take a look. I love history. In fact, one of my favorite classes in high school was in a classroom just like this where we learned about history and the professor was a big part of the reason for that. He was amazing. He could monologue for over and over without even looking at his books, just about his passion and the stories of American and world history. And I remember just being fascinated. The only thing I didn't like about that class was those dreaded words at any class, pop quiz, where anxieties rise in your soul and you wonder, did I study enough? Did I listen in class enough? Am I ready for this? And that's really a principle of all of life, that uh, you find this incredible peace when you come to Jesus Christ, when you experience his incredible peace. But the world, it seems, is always trying to pull that away and we need to press back into the peace of God on a regular basis. Because we can't just talk about the truth that we have talk about this truth that's so important to the world around us and not exhibit the peace in our lives in the midst of the anxieties and the uncertainties of this world. When we do that, when we exhibit peace, it draws people to the truth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Peace. Press, press oh. into the peace. Lord, press give, us, into the give peace. us more peace. Yes. Amen. We'll press it in. We love it. <laughs> what a great show. Yes. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of The Prayer Link. That's right. Don't forget to share your prayer requests and testimonies with us. Email us at prayerlink at cbn.org. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, prayer works. Amen.